happy Sunday, buona domenica a tutti, this is Lorena, welcome to Wake It Up. Let's talk a little bit about this mini pavlova. Mini pavlova or pavlova cake or meringues is nothing but sugar and egg whites. You add a little bit of lemon because it makes them a little bit uh, wider and also because there is a little bit of um, citric acid that helps with the foaming and then a little bit of vanilla to give some flavor. They are extremely simple, but you need to know exactly what, what is the amount of sugar and um, how to bake them. And I'm going to tell you today uh, how to make sure, how to get those beautiful pavlova uh, nice and white. Most of the time uh, they turn out brown, they are not nice, they stay chewy inside or uh, almost raw and you don't want that. Let's get started. Okay, so we have egg whites. Egg whites can be pasteurized in a brick or they can be fresh. But what you definitely want is to be at, rem at room temperature. Otherwise, it's going to take a long time to um, make that beautiful uh, foam and to whip that we actually want. So we are going to start by putting this egg whites in a bowl very 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 important you don't want in the egg whites any trace of fat and also you want to clean the bowl the best way to clean the bowl is to use vinegar grab some vinegar and a paper towel and clean the bowl and clean the attachment we are going to start at medium high speed the small amount of sugar that we have, the 100 grams of sugar, we are going to add it a little bit, high speed. This part is very important because if it's too high, we are going to incorporate a lot of air. If it's too low, we are not going to create the right structure. So the first part goes in a little bit at the time at high speed. Now medium speed and we are going to add the other part of sugar. One third at the time. Medium speed, we are going to add more sugar now. Two thirds of the sugar. And now we want to add a few drops of lemon. Just a few drops. And the lemon also takes away the kind of eggy flavor that you might get. And then you want to let it go at high speed, but also I see some sugar around the bowl and you want to clean the bowl. You don't want to have any sugar sitting on the side because then it's not going to dissolve. And this is coming actually beautiful. There you go. Down. It's going to take about five minutes to have this meringue uh, ready. And let me know if you encounter any kind of issues when you make meringue because meringue is it is a very, very simple, there are very simple, very simple ingredients, but the technique can be very tricky. So if you don't know exactly how to make it, they will get, uh, they will not get the right structure, they will not, they will stay raw inside if you don't bake them properly, too soft. Um, so yes, let me know if you guys have made any of those meringue before but they turn out chewy, exactly. They turn out chewy first because they didn't have the right structure. Most likely, most likely because you add the sugar all at once at the beginning or all at the end and it shouldn't happen. Or chewy because you didn't bake them properly. And that is the critical thing that I'm going to talk about to you uh, later. So just stay with me because this is very important. And so at this point, at high low speed, so we're gonna make a mess. We can add our vanilla to give some flavor. And now you go back on high speed and we are going to wait a little bit longer. Okay, so Chantilly cream, Chantilly cream, and you just, and 
mixer, nothing fancy, nothing crazy, super cold, the bowl was in the fridge already. And guys, I'm very sorry for the noise, but there is any other way around. And you let it go at high speed and check, you don't want to over mix your whipping cream. Where you see the peak that it stays up, that means that it's ready. And we are going to get ready with our baking sheet with a parchment paper. Your oven has to stay, has to be at 100 and uh, 100 degrees. Celsius. This is extremely important. It depends on your oven, but do not go lower than 90 degrees or 95 degrees Celsius. Ideally, you should stay with 100 degrees Celsius, which is 210 degrees Fahrenheit. That is extremely important, and I'm going to tell you why, and this is the reason why all the time these meringues come out chewy or unbaked or uncooked or very fragile. The perfect meringue is the one that it is completely dry inside, uh, that it's firm, that you can actually cut without breaking it. It is a little bit too much to ask for you guys. It's very much technical. I'm not gonna go, I'm not going to go into it, but that is the perfect meringue not the one that breaks as, as soon as you touch it. And this is the reason why the recipe that we are, that we are using today, it is three to one. That means three parts of sugar uh, and one part of egg whites. If we have 100 grams of egg whites, then we use 300 grams of granulated sugar. In fact, if you look at the recipe, we have in total 300 grams of granulated sugar. That gives the meringue a very strong structure. Going back to the baking, the temperature cannot be too high because what we want basically, it is just to uh, dehydrate, uh, so dry up our meringues. We don't have to cook them. Okay, we just have to take away all the water part that is contained that is in the meringue. So you put them in the oven and what we want to do is just to make them extremely dry through a very long baking. Most of the time you see those recipes, I remember when I just started because I learned many things just by myself and by trying, I had like tons of wasted of, 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 of ingredients. I will bake them for 20, 30 minutes and they will nice and beautiful outside and then as soon as you touch them, completely raw and soft or at its best, chewy inside. No, they have to stay very long in the oven. I'm talking about two hours, two hours and a half. And then you turn on the oven and you leave your meringues, your cookies, in your pavlova cakes, it depends on what you wanna make, in the oven all night. So we have here our beautiful meringue. And to make these cakes, you can use a piping bag or you can use just a spoon. And today we are going to use just, um, actually a piping, sorry, just a, just a spoon and we are going to use a spoon. I have this one just to make it cleaner. And what you want to do is just to, Grab one full spoon, and hopefully you guys can see me, and you just place it on your, look at the texture, look at the consistency, like it doesn't move. This is what you want. And again, this is because we added a lot of sugar, and I'm gonna show you it in a finish, okay? Or you can just pipe it, you can just pipe, and actually I'm going to show you how, because I actually made it what we, what I call nests. So you leave a way more empty space in the center that you fill with piping, with meringue, sorry, whipping cream, country whipping cream. So you can also use a piping bag and you make what we call nests. That means nice and beautiful outside with the wheel inside. 
that you are going to fill with whatever you want. It can be chocolate, it can be ganache, it can be with cream, which is exactly what I, what we are going to do today. So you are going to fill this piping bag. If you are by yourself and if you are not very comfortable with filling up a piping bag and you do not want to make a mess in your kitchen, use a cup, coffee cup, tea cup, like this. So you can hold the cup and you can just fill your bag like this, okay? Once you are done, Get your piping bag. Just right on top. Close it up. Secure your bag like this. So you want to keep your two fingers close and tight just to lock the piping bag. You don't want the stuff coming up. With your right hand, dominant hand, you are going to squeeze the amount that you want. The other end, no dominant end, is the one that is going to guide your piping bag, okay? So this is what we are going to do to make a nest. Put a little bit of meringue at the bottom. You create some kind of base and then you go in circle One time, two times. Once again, a little bit at the bottom. You want to create a base. You don't want to have your nest with the hole at the bottom. Once you have this base here, then circle with your star tip all around one and two. If you don't have uh, a piping bag and you want to keep it simple what you are going to do it is basically you have those beautiful meringues here so you are just going to squish the top a little bit just like this all right and once again here same thing a little bit of pressure in the center and a little bit around so you want this part that is um that is flatter but you still want a little bit of edge at the around that it's going to hold the whipping cream and then the fruit that we are going to put on top i'm going to show you closer our nests okay we have a base and then we just did some piping around, okay? So these are going to bake at 100 degrees Celsius or 210 Fahrenheit. You have to have time because you have to keep your oven on for at least two hours, two hours and a half. If you go too high, if it depends on your oven, but please don't go higher than 220 to 220, 230 Fahrenheit or 100, 105, or 110 Celsius. What is gonna happen, they are not going to burn, but when you see that yellowish color, that it's not yellowish or brownish color, what happens is that even if you leave them longer so they get dry inside how they, are, how they are supposed to be, they turn brown, not because they are burned, but because you start to process with the protein in the egg whites that turns this pavlova a brown so it doesn't change the taste so they are not burned and you can still eat them but it's the look that is not the same okay we want as much as possible um, some white nice pavlova cakes you can also leave those like this the one in the center they are beautiful and nice okay and you literally make some cookies another trick this is the final trick that I have to tell you and listen to me because this is very important so we are going to also put some icing sugar on top you don't have to but it's just going to keep them nice and crispy and uh, this you grab an aluminium some aluminium foil and you make 
something like this okay you make a little bowl and once you put your meringue in your oven you want your oven to stay a tiny bit open because we want to dry those cookies and all the humidity that is coming out of those meringue we don't want that to stay in the oven we want that kind of steam to go out it's going to help to have your meringues nice and crispy another way another thing very important that I'm going to tell you in a moment okay so they are ready here we have our nests this is what I have made nests only to make it simple for you guys and this is as you can see they are okay they don't break they are quite sturdy because this is what we want okay with the well in the center and now very simple you don't need a piping bag with just a spoon we are going to put our So we are going to put a little bit of whipped cream with our spoon. Put it here so you guys can see. Just in the center. You spread it a little bit, not too much because the fruit itself is going to do its job. And so in the center again. One more time. It depends on how much you want. That it's totally up to you so in here now we have some beautiful fruit i'm going to be using some fresh fruit blueberry blackberries raspberries and you just add some on top blackberries here a couple of raspberries and Oh, you can also add more at the bottom. One and the blackberries here. Now, if you have some apricot jam, I'm warm it up in the microwave and with a brush, you just brush a little bit on top and it's going to be beautiful and shiny and this fruit is going to look like beautiful and you can make beautiful pictures uh, to put on Instagram. Okay. But what we are going to do today, we are just going to use some icing sugar on top and it's quite just a little bit otherwise you will not be seeing the fruit, right? And we don't want that. Let me add another raspberry here. There we go. It's pretty. And this is done, guys. So very simple. Voila. What do you think? Let me know what you think in this comment section below. Did you like it? Would you eat them right away? Are you gonna make them tonight? Let me know. Okay guys, thank you so much for joining me and I hope that you like this class. Have a wonderful Sunday and I'll see you soon.